I'm really not sure how to start this video. I hate having to explain myself. At least not ex explain like personal details or uh, share with you guys things that happen be behind closed doors because I think just certain things don't need to be said on the internet. Some things should be kept in private and not everybody needs to know your ins and outs of everything. But given the circumstances and how everyone is caught by surprise of how I moved and what I did, um, I figure it's only right that I share with you guys what happened, why things are the way they are. I remember when I was living with my ex, Chris had reached out to me one time and asked me how I was doing, everything, if everything was okay. Just checking on me, it was so random. He wrote to me randomly, I think he did that twice, if I'm not mistaken, or if it was one time, I don't remember. But I was with my ex at that time. He asked me how I was doing, and my ex seen that conversation. Um, and Chris was just asking me how I was doing, and that was pretty much it. And then when me and Josue broke up, I was like, you know what, let me hit up Chris. Maybe we can link out here in Orlando, we can record some videos or whatever. And that's how that happened. We started talking. He's like, oh, you could collaborate now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So that happened. Um, everybody knows I went to Texas. We linked together. I was staying at a hotel. Second time I went over there, I ended up staying in his house. But I was going to stay at a hotel. But because something happened with the hotel, I didn't stay in the hotel. So I ended up being in his house. So Chris and I decided that we should collaborate. It was a good move for the both of us. It will help the both of us. It was like a business move. Everybody knows that. That goes without saying. Everybody knows that we linked up together not to be in a relationship, not to get back at nobody. It was just a business move for the both of us. And that's literally how we went in with it. I remember talking to Chris here in Florida and he was like, you should come out here and stay with me in Texas for a whole month. And I was like, a month? I was like, oh no, Chris, I don't think I could do that. In the midst of that conversation with Chris, I also told him, Chris, I know that we can, I know there's potential and I know we can make a lot of money and I know this is a good move for the both of us and this will be fun or whatnot. But I told him, I said, I'm scared that being, and I just got out of a relationship and I am vulnerable, I'm scared that I fall for you or I like start loving you and I start wanting to be with you and I know that I'm not in the headspace to be in a relationship. He was like, don't worry about none of that. Don't think about that. If, things ha if that happens, then let that happen on its own. But don't think about that. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to force you into anything or whatever. He made me feel super comfortable. And my heart was still heavy. And I was still thinking. And I was still so scared that I was going to fall for him because I was vulnerable. And I had just gotten out of a relationship. And um, I was just afraid. I was just afraid that... My walls wasn't up. I was afraid that I wasn't strong enough to be with another man and not get my feelings involved. I was, I was just, the whole idea of being with somebody else for a long time, because I know what it is to be with someone for a long time, I was scared. But he um, made me feel secure and made me feel comfortable. With that being said, um, I ended up making that move and I go to Texas and I still went for the whole month. I think that was the month of November. And we was just bangers after bangers and posting videos and posting videos. We were super productive and it was a great month together. Everything was going good. Um, I think where things started getting complicated when we mixed business with pleasure. I feel like that was the biggest fallout. I feel like I should have never opened up that door and I should never, uh, I should just stood my ground and stood strong and not be weak by temptations or whatever the case may be. But I am grown. Things happen. Um, but I feel like had we not mixed business with pleasure, things wouldn't have gotten this complicated, honestly. And to be quite honest, I, I did like Chris. I had seen potential in him. There were so many things that I liked about him. And I was still getting to know him. So I kind of trusted him and I was like, 
let's see maybe it can happen if we're doing good so good together and we have this beautiful chemistry like he might just be the one that's what i thought to myself we did all those fun things chris was amazing our time together was amazing we had a great time together um the chemistry was definitely there and all that everything that you guys seen everything that you guys seen was true it was we wasn't faking i cannot act i'm not a good actor y'all i'm really not end up liking him liking the person that he was and liking the person that he is and i guess vice versa the, the feelings were mutual we clicked we clicked so well but you don't really know a person in a month i feel like you get to know a person when you start living with them and you spend a lot of time with them a month is not enough but the beginning like every other every relationship out there the beginning is always like honeymoon stage or whatever um it's definitely one of those things to be honest but anytime that you saw us like not post for really for like four days five days or whatever every time that happened there was a reason behind it petty arguments i'm talking the most pettiest of the pettiest that it didn't even make sense for it to go that long of us not talking but whenever uh, there was an argument or disagreement, whatever, Chris wouldn't talk to me for three or four days, literally, while I was out in Texas. Like, I would wake up in the morning, and he won't say a word to me. I would try to say something to him, and it was very, like, one-word answers, and he would, just wouldn't talk to me. It didn't happen once or twice or three times. It happened a few times that Chris just would lash out and not talk to me for four days and i remember feeling so alone in texas i even told my friend i said i've i feel more alone here than in my own apartment and i live by myself like i'm with chris here and it's like i feel so lonely i don't like this feeling and i i remember telling him like i don't deserve to be feeling like this for something so petty it's not cool like i'm out here by myself I don't have my own car. I can't move freely around in Texas. This is not where I'm from. And I'm here at your convenience. So don't make me feel that way. I mean, four days in the house and not saying one word to each other, not even looking at each other. It was, and then it was over something so petty. So, so, so petty that it didn't even make sense. And I was just like, why is he acting like this? I mean, he will go to the bed and turn over and not talk to me not look at me and it's not that i did something wrong it would be for example um i had asked him i think he mentioned this in his video i asked him about um him inviting someone to the studio with him and the reason why i had asked him about it was because i was staying with him in the house and there was a night that I didn't go with him to the studio and he went by himself. I didn't feel like going, I don't know why, but I didn't go, I stood home. And that made me ask him like, did you really invite somebody to the studio when I didn't go? And the only reason why I asked that was because at that point we was already um, intimate and I wasn't, I would never be okay with me staying in someone's house and he's dipping in over there trying to sleep with somebody else at a studio so that's why i asked him that i was like he did not just try to play me while i'm in the house and he's inviting someone to the studio but that um that situation got shut down but i was like chris did you invite somebody to the studio where did i go he was like what are you talking about he starts getting loud and he's like i didn't invite nobody look at the, the message he shows me the messages and from what it looked like he wasn't talking to her or inviting her to the studio he even called her in front of me and I told him, don't do that. You don't have to do that. He called her in front of me and she's like, oh no, I haven't spoken to you, whatever. So that shut me down. But in that conversation, he was like, you're not even my girl. So don't ask me no questions about no girl, no nothing. And I was like, oh, okay. Copy, heard you, <laughs> note it. I won't ask you. And we get back to the house. Time starts, the time of not communicating anymore. Four days not talking to me straight. Like, is that, like like if I was put in some punishment or something like that, he was not talking to me four days straight. Mind you, 
I'm already over the situation. It's fine. You cleared it up, whatever. But it's like um, not moving. How do we move forward from it? Our communication was terrible. Nothing. It was just like if it was gonna, if he was mad, four days or five days, we was not gonna be talking. It was just me laying in the house, um, him on 2K all day, and just not exchanging not one word, not one word. It's a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling being in a household with someone and you guys are not exchanging any words, walking past each other like nothing, not talking. It's frustrating. It's so irritating. It's like, do you really feel for me? Because it doesn't seem that way. Your actions say otherwise. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. And what goes on social media, what's said on social media, oh, I feel this, I'm her, I'm this and that. Make sure your actions add up because... The pettiness and the things you do behind closed doors don't match up. But not talking for four days straight and that constantly happened took a toll on on me and on how I viewed our friendship and how I viewed if there was a potential relationship. I knew that that's something that I wasn't going to want to deal with. Someone not talking to me for three days and not being able to communicate with me. Like, I can't do that. It was just so dramatic, it was petty, it was unnecessary, but it happened a few times. And I started realizing that when someone plays the victim, they'll lash out so that you don't question them anymore about certain things. You don't ask them certain questions that they don't want to be asked. But when they ask you a question, they expect an answer. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if I'm right, but maybe I feel like that is a tactic one has when they don't want to answer a question or they just want to get away with what they want to get away with. They don't want they want you to learn like, you know what? Don't ask me no questions. If you keep asking me questions, this is what I'm gonna do to you. I'm not gonna talk to you. I'm gonna treat you like shit. Not treat me like shit like physically or talk to me bad or whatever, but you know, not talk to me. And I didn't like that. I felt like that was a tactic that I put on to and I didn't appreciate it. And then things started escalating. That gets frustrating. Those, those emotions start to build up. And then name calling started happening. But sometimes it would just come out of my mouth. Like, you acting like this. You acting like that. Like, why are you acting like that? That doesn't make sense. It got toxic. The night that I booked my flight to Las, Ve to Los Angeles, I was talking to my girlfriend who I hadn't seen in a really long time and she's like you should come you should come and at that moment I was like yeah I need, I need to get out of here I want to go I need I need some time apart from his space and from being in Texas I was always in Texas I kept flying to Texas I was sitting there for a really long time barely even sit in my house this is the longest I've been in my house so and nothing my girlfriend invited me and she was like come come and I was like sure let me go and I stayed with my girlfriend for my whole trip. I was with her. She's very much involved in the music industry. So we was at the studio a lot. And she also works with Jay. And one day we did go visit him, which everybody saw on in the internet. Um, and we wasn't there for more than an hour. I kid you not, I put that on anything. Um, we talked a little bit, caught up a little bit, and that was really it. Um, nothing happened, and that makes me bring up the prank that I did on Chris. And that prank idea came from Chris. So let's knock that out there, because I know people are in the comments like, oh, she probably did do this, she probably did do that, yada, 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 this is why it becomes toxic, this and that. But that was Chris's idea. Um, when I was at Cali, Chris had called me and he was like, did you do this with him? Did you do that? And I was like, no, Chris, I didn't. Then he was upset that everybody was making it more than what it was. And I too was upset. I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Cause it was like me moving innocently bites me in the ass no matter what, because it's like, I'm not supposed to do anything. I can't do, I can't be seen here. I can't be seen there. Cause I'm tied down to something that I'm really, really not tied down to. I'm really not in a relationship. So it sucks how you gotta move a certain way now, you know, because you're exposing your life to social media. But I know my my conscience is clean. I don't have a, I'm not guilty of anything. So I made sure that Chris felt that about me and felt that I was being genuine about my response and 
how I was in California. And all he wanted was for me to come back home, go back to Texas. And while I was in Texas, while we were texting each other, he was like, mm, Jay is off limits. Unfollow him and follow all those dudes that you unfollow that you follow there there with the game or whatever. Mind you, these are older men and none of them disrespected me. None of them came out their mouth and violated me or always being fresh or tried anything with me. They were being so genuine. I felt like I was networking with people and I met nice genuine people. So to please him and for him not to think anything of it, like if I cared that much about some dudes, I unfollowed them. And honestly, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that because I shouldn't have to. I didn't do anything wrong. No one is, is being disrespectful to me. No one is trying to get in my pants like he's justifying. That's why he wanted me to follow them. It was none of that. I didn't get those vibes. I'm a grown woman. I know when a guy does that. I And I can handle that myself. You don't have to handle that for me. No one does. Um, so anyway, I ended up unfollowing them, which I shouldn't have because I gave him more than an inch of controlling, of controlling me when he's not even my man. But I did to show him my loyalty to him, I guess. Moving forward, I went back to Texas. And not even 24 hours passed, and me and Chris got into a big fight. I was like, oh my god, I should have never left California. Because I can't believe this is happening in less than 24 hours. We made a video, everything was going well. The night came, and he did something, and I questioned him about it. His response was vague. And then he started giving me an attitude because he didn't want to go into details. So I kind of pressed the issue a little bit more and I guess that irritated him. So um, he starts getting mad and he doesn't want to talk to me no more. Then he stops talking to me for another four days. He turns around and I said, Chris, but I'm not even yelling. I'm not getting mad. Why are you raising your voice or whatever? Like, it's a simple question. If you're gonna question me about my doings, what I did in California, or tell me to do this to please you, whatever, if I'm asking you a question, why can't you answer my question? I started to feel like he can ask me whatever he wants to ask me, and I can't do that to him. And I was like, that's not right. That doesn't make sense to me. That's it's not gonna work like that. So I started realizing that um whenever he didn't want to be asked questions, or whatever, he would lash out and just not talk to me. For a few days and that's what happened and now valentine's day is around the corner valentine's day was like what two days two days left for valentine's day and we weren't good at all we wasn't talking at all i was like i'm not about to sit here on valentine's day with a man that's not looking at me that's not talking to me that's not saying nothing to me for no good reason it was so petty i was like i just can't i just can't do it um, I would try to communicate with him. I remember cooking him breakfast as soon as I came back from um, California. Every day I was making him breakfast, making him dinner. And um, those four or five days that we wasn't talking, I was still making him breakfast. He wasn't saying thank you to me. He wasn't saying anything to me. Nothing, nothing. I was trying to communicate with him, say some words, but it was very uh, bland. He did not want to talk to me. And... I just couldn't see myself staying in, in Texas for Valentine's Day with him, with our energy being that way. I couldn't see it getting any better. It didn't make sense. And I couldn't see it even being genuine, even if we did something. Because I, I was already in a space that I didn't want to be with him on Valentine's Day. I was like, this is, gonna, this is not, this is not going to feel genuine. I, I feel some type of way towards how he's acting with me and for me to be lovey and be the person that I am full of love for me to feel be that way on Valentine's Day I know it's not going to come out naturally so for me not to feel that way and, or or to have any expectations or whatever I was like it's best for me to leave because it's not going anywhere things are really bad we're not communicating it's toxic and he didn't know I was leaving because he wasn't talking to me. 
But I ended up booking my flight. Or did I? I did mention it to him. Actually, I think I did mention him. I asked him, do you want me to leave? Do you care? He's, he's like, he was kind of like nonchalant, like do whatever you want to do kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I end up booking my flight and I left home. Kid you not, when I got on that plane, I started crying. I got emotional. I called one of my friends. I was like, I'm really sad. This is how I left, but I can't take it. I can't take the way we are right now. It's just too much and I don't want to be that way. So I got emotional. I cried on the plane and I ended up texting Chris a long message and I'll read it to you guys because I have it. Not that long, but I told him, let me see if I find it. Um, okay. I said, I'm really sad. This was February 12th. I left. I said, really sad. I left on these terms, but it was too much for me. I've made so many sacrifices and I've been feeling so unappreciated. I don't expect things to be perfect, but some consideration goes a long way. I hope someday we learn to understand each other in ways that we never disrespect one another. And with this time apart, we think things over and come to some common ground and are able to actually communicate without arguing. Call me anytime. He's like, okay, cool, have a safe fight. Flight. Um, so, yeah, I spent Valentine's Day by myself in my house, which is cool. I'd rather have been in my own space than be accompanied by bad energy, bad vibes. I didn't want that. Obviously, I spent Valentine's Day by myself. Um, I was always by myself. I um, didn't hang out with nobody. Didn't hang out with my ex or nothing. Um, people probably think that me and him was flirty and me and him was still talking. We really only spoke when it had to do with the house. And then I ended up going to New York and visiting my family. And um, Chris and I was talking here and there while I was in New York. And then I um, came back to Orlando and Chris met me here in Orlando so that we could go on my trip on our trip to Puerto Rico for my birthday. <laughs> Everything was fine. Everything was good. Back to normal. And I must say, if it wasn't for Destiny and Marquise and my uncle being there, I don't know. I really don't know how Puerto Rico, that trip would have turned out. I really don't. Given how Chris moves whenever there's an argument or a disagreement, I think that trip would have went shit. But when we landed in Puerto Rico, we had gotten into a huge fight, literally landing, landing. And you know what, I'm gonna say what, the, what the, the fight was about. So I opened up my messages in front of Chris, my DMs, and it's my birthday. And I have a whole bunch of people wishing me a happy birthday, a whole bunch. And there's one guy, it says, happy birthday, beautiful. And Chris was like, let me see that. And I, and I showed it to him, and he was like, beautiful. I was like, yeah, and he got pissed off saying, you must be talking to him. You must have been talking to him. You probably effed him. Why would he be calling you beautiful? And I was like, oh, hell no, Chris, we're not about to do this. This is not about to happen, not on my birthday. Just because someone called me beautiful, uh-uh. Please don't do this. I already saw it. His mood changed. His mood changed completely. I asked him, I said, please, don't do this. Just because somebody told me I'm beautiful. That, that's retarded. Don't act like that or whatever. We got off the plane. I went to go get the car rental. He didn't come inside with me. He stood outside. So I was dealing with the car rental by myself. And I was taking care of it or whatever. I got the car rental. Um, he didn't ask me nothing about it. He, he literally stood outside. So I felt like I was already by myself. I already felt the vibes of my birthday trip how it was gonna be, just by myself. Um, we got in the car and it's like four in the morning because we, we had missed our flight, we had a really late flight. In the car, driving to our Airbnb, I asked Chris, I turned over and I was driving, and I said, Chris, I don't want this kind of energy, especially on my birthday. Like. We're not doing this. No four days, not talking, none of this attitude is uncalled for. You don't even have an attitude. I don't have an attitude. 
he starts yelling and he scared me. I remember while I was driving, I jumped up. I was like, what the, f what the fuck is wrong with him? Like yelling out of nowhere. And I was like, nah, you, you're doing too much. Like, I don't understand why you're yelling like that. Relax. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about the argument, but it was just, it got really, really ugly. Really, really ugly. And I was trying to be the, so calm, but he was so irritated about that message. And I, it just didn't make sense to me. And I just didn't want him to have an attitude like that the whole vacation. So I tried talking to him about it, but that didn't go nowhere. Um, it really didn't go nowhere. He called me a bad, a bad name that I've never been called before. And I was pissed off. I was like, I do not want to sleep with him. I don't want to be in the same house with him. I'm so mad that he came. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was going to be like this. I knew, I knew he shouldn't have came with for my birthday. I was just so pissed off. And... Every day in Puerto Rico, it wasn't good. Behind every picture that we had, there was an argument about something so silly, something dumb. And the whole trip in Puerto Rico, it was like the distance between us. It was like we were together, but not together. It wasn't lovey, it wasn't affectionate, it was none of that. We didn't do nothing in Puerto Rico because the energy and the vibes wasn't there at all, at all. And I felt some type of way the night that we landed. The way he made me feel and the way he was talking, I I just couldn't be my true self. I couldn't, I, I had, I act on my emotions. I am who I am and I'm not gonna sugarcoat. I'm not gonna front like everything's okay. Like if I'm happy that you did this or called me this, like, so, um, if it wasn't for meeting up with my uncle and having uh, Destiny Marquise there and making it better and bringing light to our trip, I think it would have been hell, to be honest. But we did have fun, especially the times that we were lit. We had a good time, but outside of those moments, it was very like barely communicating, um, being distant, not being around me, being far, or not wanting to come with me here, not wanting to come with me there, not wanting to eat with us at the table, uh, doing his own thing, walking away from us. It was just, it was just so immature and so petty that it was, it was a huge turn off to me. I was just like, why on vacation are you acting like this? But whatever, we end up the trip, we still have fun in Puerto Rico was a, su a success. I love Puerto Rico. My vacation was amazing. We came back to Orlando together. Everything was cool. We was here for a, a, a minute. I feel like past the week with Chris is not good. We Something ends up happening. A big argument. We lash out. We don't talk. We got back to Orlando, whatever. He got his Instagram back. Everybody saw how he moved when he got his Instagram back. And I was teasing him. I said, well, you're going to be hooked. You're going to stay on your phone. But I was laughing about it. I didn't care. Um, so he had a, his Instagram back. And he was all happy. And I was happy for him, too. Because I would hate to lose my Instagram. And, and not being able to, you know, be on my feet and stuff. Yeah, everything was fine. One day, I don't know, we're out random. He starts talking about the people that I follow. I follow people that I used to mess with or whatever. I said, huh, Chris, what are you talking about? We spoke about this a long time ago in Texas. Like, and I'm not talking about people from Cali or anything like that. This is like people that I've always been following. Like, he just mentioned that out of nowhere. And I was like, where are you coming from? This is weird. Why are you talking about people that I follow? Like, why does that matter? This is very odd. But I knew that came with something. I, I, he's, Chris is kind of, he's, Chris is calculated, and I, I and I noticed that about him. I know he's he everything he does is for a reason. So I ignored that. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Who cares about that? Like, I'm not about to to be like, yeah, this is the one I put. This is like, who cares about that? I said, I don't even talk to those people. Why are you bringing that up? So that the very next day, I woke up in the morning. I was making breakfast. He had posted a story, and I noticed that he posted this girl. This girl in a bathing suit. Shout for shout out. And I was like, oh, 